Talking Basketball Podcast! Hello, welcome to another edition of the Talking Basketball Podcast. I am Mark. I am a quiet Paul. A very quiet Paul today. <laughs> in, the, in the northern studio. In your northern studio, where you are not allowed to awake sleep. the sleeping beasts. Yes. If you do hear Hello. something terrible happen to Paul on air, that's because he's woken someone up. <laughs> you'll see. You'll see it. So, what we got this week then, Paul? We're back into the BBL. The BBL. But before I go the any further, lead of Britishness, Mark, I've sent this. I've sent an image to you. Yes. Chuck that on social media. That is my gift to all the listeners of the podcast. It's uh, you got these talking basketball podcast stickers, and yep. I kind of try to mimic putting one on a basketball court floor. And um, well, it's my screensaver. I think it looks pretty cool. So uh, I think share it, and that is that is my gift to our thirty thousand listeners. I'm trying to work out last if that's days. your kitchen or your bathroom. Let's just let's just say it's a basketball court and leave it there. That's the basketball court, yeah. That is the talking basketball basketball court. There you go. Yes. <laughs> There's the dream. Yeah. So have a court in there the studio one day. Yeah, we'll share that out for sure. Yeah. So I think they'll like it. We have week thirteen of the BBL. It's been a busy week. Has it? Yeah. <laughs> My brain is switching off. It is switching off. Someone's in holiday, in holiday mode. mode. Mm. Yeah, I'm in holiday mode. But um, yes, so um, yeah, it's been a while. Week it's 13. Right. I mean, it's funny that, got isn't a it? Few games. Just looking at that, week 13. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, where's that gone? Some of the teams are approaching the halfway mark. Others are a, a little bit further down the road. Right. Who's going this year? Who's going first? This year. Yeah, I know. I'll let it in. You're tired as well. Um, I'm tired of waiting for you. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind. I've got three games here, so I don't mind which one you want me to do. Just pick one. I kind of got it. two that go together. So well, do you know what? We're gonna maybe do, you go first. I'll, we'll do you it in the first. order that they came through. Simple as that. So the order they've been played in the week. Well, how would we do that? Yeah. All right. All right. So the first one is. <laughs> Manchester Ooh. Giants versus the Scorchers. And this was home in Manchester. Long story short, Manchester won the game. They stole it from nice. the Scorchers. Yeah. It was actually quite... It looked at one point, he thought, this, this is a really tight game. And the Scorchers were like nine down at the half. But the deficit like increased to 11, then came back to sort of... Uh, I think they were tied... For at the end of the third, um, 61 61. Yeah, I wrote it down. So they literally got right back into it again. It was a really, really good game. And I thought, are the Scorchers going to like nip this here? But um, they, they just they just couldn't do it. They just couldn't quite get it. So the Giants got their win. And I know you've got a soft spots for the Giants. Um, but, you know, Giants getting their win in their home stadium, it's got to be a good feeling for them. And it's really interesting because. When you look at the Giants and the actual um, Scorchers, they are eighth and ninth in the league. So they are like, they're kind of like little in the rivalry, like we want to win here. Um, so that gets them within one win of switching places now, I think. Um, but th there was, <laughs> I'm not going to say a highlight, there was an air ball <laughs> that just went horribly, horribly, horribly wrong. And I've got a highlight of that as a guy called Anson threw that up it just it was like I'm not sure what you're Jalen wow Jalen yeah it just it's one of those shots that you think he's a potential all-star mate man, I don't, I don't, it was the you know when you go that's the wrong shot and then it got even worse because then one of their other players Wang went up for a, he went for a three now I would not have done that and this this is on the Scorchers team 
he went up for that three and i really wouldn't have done that because they actually had the if you watch it back through he had a perfect drive he could have gone and got the really secure two there no let's go for the glory it was an error and i missed that they went up the other end they scored even the greats miss mark even the greats miss no Look do you know what I'm, he threw up two air balls and one quarter yeah and the, i'm, and ca I'm calling that he, he made the wrong slot selection there he went for the um wow. he, i think he went for the hero ball moment and he actually should have gone for we because they were at that point of it was such a close game you've got to make those right decisions and he, he clearly made the wrong one um but i also want to highlight one other player in that game which was william lee that's one someone that you mentioned who'd been off of the season for a while and come back in missed two free throws free throws win games mark they do um and you know the giants, what was the score in this game 87 85 so the giants won only by two points but he missed those free throws right towards the end when the giants were like holding on they were still they're on their victory but they were holding on and you think that's not a time you can afford to miss free throws here so i, I just yeah. want to highlight that because we've we've mentioned with some other players i want to say we named and shamed them but in the previous episodes free throw seems to be maybe an error or maybe an area where we can uh, improve in in the bbl because there's a lot of people getting one for two, one for two going for one for five on free throws and having really low percentages but to miss both there's pressure them. as well i know i know what you're saying but there is pressure of course there is a bbl game and if you're missing a free throw two, at the beginning 30 of the seconds game. left whatever it was it's like you can yeah. miss a shot I mean, at any point during the game that's fair enough but free throws there's no point in the game where a free throw isn't a pressure shot they all should matter and they should all count just our shack they, they're all important yeah but you know yeah. giants got a win so that's really you know it's nice for the dem and you know that puts them up to five wins for the season maybe that you know pick them up a little bit and keep them going but that's my that's my roundup for that for that game wow that was amazing roundup mark yeah sure i feel sweet. sorry for william lee you pinned you you pulled him out and had a go at him for missing two free throws no i look he did well he got 15 <laughs> points 15 points eight rebounds and three assists he did well but that 15 points that could have been 18 points easily because he missed two just straight off the bat and he missed another one further on. Yeah, there's everyone's going to miss shots. The beauty of basketball is that no one has a hundred percent record. It's, it doesn't it doesn't work that way. It's very much a how many you miss and you know 40 percent, 30 percent, whatever it is. But in my next game, I'm talking about someone who is a hundred percent. Oh no! <laughs> Why did I say that? Oh dear! But you, that's a great you, segue. You can't be you can't be um, missing free throws. They're, they're, they're open shots. They're uncontested. No. You shouldn't be missing. But them. also, you lose a game by two points and you miss two free throws. Look, he's going to be getting on that bus or you know getting yeah. back home, and he's going to sit there and go, "Damn it!" I mean, look, any basketball player, you know what it's like. You get home, yeah. or you're in the car, and you're all, or in the bus, whatever. Exactly. And it's and he's, already going through your mind, like, "Hang on, if I'd done this, if I'd done that, what is it?" So he's lucky that like Evan Walsh was arguably player of the game there. Um, I mean, Wang was great, and Justin Robinson needs a shout because he's superb for the Scorchers. But they just, even though they were putting in 30 points, 16 points, it, they just couldn't get over um, whatever Surrey gave. Manchester just had a bit more, it, it seems. Um, it was it was a really fun game to watch, actually, and I watched that one second. It was the, even though it was one of the first games in this week, I missed it the first time around, so I actually had to go back and watch it. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a good game. And I really, really liked um <laughs> manchester's kit with the black kit with the yellow around the outside rather than the yellow kit i really like that I thought it was a cool looking kit you know I, you know i like the looks of the kit so yeah yeah that, that's my takeaway over to you what go on, mark give me a not a long buzzer though one <laughs> that's all buzzer no no the buzzer i always use you can tell i'm not in the studio no, that's the long one. The one above it. There you go. That's air an horn. air horn. That's not a buzzer. Oh, you know what I meant. Anyway, <laughs> right. I'm going to be talking about the London Lions and the Plymouth Patriots. So this is, um, you know, look, look, London are the 
in-form team at the moment. And they're over halfway through their season. There's 20 games in now. Uh, actually, I say that when this game was played, they were then 19 games in. Well, at the end of this game, it was 19 games in. Um, and, uh, you know, we need to talk about... Who do we need to talk about? The man, the legend, the, the main name that comes on everyone's lips when you say BBL at the moment and that's the legend Matt Morgan oh. <laughs> I can't say it the way I want to say it because I am trying to talk a bit quieter but uh, <laughs> um, he had 27 points 4 assists 4 rebounds and 2 steals yeah you, like, that Was, sounds, did that come across? no that sounds weird like really weird oh. <laughs> you know what? I'm really tempted just to give. Don't do it. <clears throat> really tempted Don't do to do it. it. If you wake that and household, listeners... you are not getting on that plane tomorrow. Yeah, but no, nope. you'll be getting want, in. The... That's what they want. They'll be putting you on a crate. <laughs> the listeners want it though. Oh, I'm so tempted. Oh, I get oh. hit in the back of the head. Anyway, what I liked about um, one of the stats I loved from Matt Morgan in this game, he uh, <laughs> and this is going from what you just said mark he was 100 percent from the free throw line oh and he didn't just go once or twice he was 11 for 11 and you know well what a start i love massive that. credit 100 percent. yeah that's what we want that's what you should be getting you are a professional basketball player how many hours do you spend sitting there throwing them up that's what we want to see yeah and you know he's he is um he is the, the man to talk about at the moment um you know um Oh man, my stats are all over the freaking place. I can't find anything. I had a whole page dedicated to the legend Matt Morgan. And I can't find it now. It's come to my turn. What's going on? Well, that just goes to show how unprepared you are. <laughs> you still can't find it, can you? Oh, you no. monkey. Well, um, I, well he, but he does go to the line a lot. So he's he's actually scored at 81 um, points from the line. And uh, he's, his free throw line percentage is 87.1%. And he's second in the league, just behind Jordan Johnson of the Newcastle Eagles. So, um, you know, it was those kind of stats which makes Matt Morgan, you know, the player he is. Mm. Um, you also got to talk about, you, you know, he is... Mr. Consistent, isn't he? Every game. Um, damn it, where is it? Is I've got a number here, but I don't think it's him. I've 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 let him down. I feel like I've let the man you down. Have let, you're letting the listeners damn. down. You're letting him down. You're letting me down. And you're letting it's because we down. did an NBA show. You made me do an NBA show and this one at the same time. So I've got all these pieces of paper lying around everywhere. Anyway, Two pieces of yeah, paper. He's, oh. You know, bleeds. I want to. There was one play I did like um, from the Plymouth Patriots. Hey, look, Pat Riots want there. This was at the Copper Box, and Pat Riots want there. So that's got to be a huge contribution already. Uh, I've got a soft spot for Pat. He is a bloody legend. Um, but uh, Elvisi Dusha, um, I'm going to say with a Mark Jackson esque move on Taylor, which was really nice. Kind of pumped it up, did this kind of like. Euro forward step, two points, good. Um, but Josh Sharma, he is again just in the paint. He ended up with 18.7 rebound, two blocks. Um, he's just doing all the dirty work inside. Yeah. That's what he just did all the work inside. And I love those kind of players, you know, just bumping around, knocking, doing a lot of things that I think coaches appreciate. And, you know, the fans, a lot of the fans just look at points per game and stuff like that. Um, or, you know, those huge highlights. But you know, I just like him as a player. Um, and I wonder how long London can hold on to him. I know that sounds silly. No, I, how long I, think, that's a, I think that's very valid because there's been quite a few players that, uh, I want to say arguably mid-season at the moment, but that we're at the point in the season that's been going, you know, 13 weeks. There have been some changes in, in rosters. Um, some people have been let go. They have moved some people across. Um, if someone gets the allure of a big European team, you know, that there's big money out there. 
Yeah, I think it's possible with him. Um, but again, mm. <laughs> you probably say that for quite a few of the London Lion players. Um, but, um, you know, there was a really nice player as well. Um, Got to mention his name, Luke Nelson. Mr. Hustle, I call him. Every time there's a, uh, um, a, pl- um, a highlight yep. for London... Luke Nelson's on the bloody floor hustling for it. That's what I like I about like that. that's that's my kind of player, you know, when you're diving on the floor, all those little all the thankless tasks yep. that some players do. Um that's what I I, I I absolutely love. So um one of Josh Sharma's um highlights was, you know, he's just um it, uh, you know, really nice dunk and Shaq-esque where he dunked and just like really hang on the ring and kind of pulled it a bit. Yep. Which is really good. But Luke Nelson, he was the man on the floor hustling. Um, I don't, I want to say it was, I don't think it was, no, it wasn't a steal. Um, but he was on the floor, gets the ball, bam, passes it to Josh Sharma, boom, dunk, which was great. Um, ah, that was the stat I was looking for. It doesn't feel as magical now. It's, I've built it up so much. But Matt Morgan, he has got 46 three pointers, second in the league, just behind Cheshire's, mm, uh, <laughs> behind, is it Maceo Jack? So yeah, you know, just Matt Morgan is someone else's on. that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, look, it's getting late. I'm tired. Uh, Good it's, night. It's not getting late. No, look, so, not even look, nine we, o'clock. We're gonna we're gonna get into, um, you know, that was the Patriots. London beaten by seven points. Yeah. Um, and I do think I don't want to say we've been critical of London. Um, it's just that we want that league to be really um, close at the top, um, which is why we're kind of rooting for them to lose, which they have too recently. Um, but, well, look, yeah, I, I feel think we're being a little harsh no, on them. No, I will just say I this. I feel we're being harsh. Patriots. And I feel guilty that I'm not really going for it with Matt Morgan going at 27 points because I can't shout. So I feel guilty. That's why I'm so tempted to do it and wait the household up. But it won't not, be worth the aggro. It's not worth it. It'll be like a scene out of Predator. You'll be hanging upside down and getting skinned. Um, it's worth pointing out, like it. the Plymouth City Patriots have only got two wins. And one of their wins was against the Lions. Um, the, they were the first crown denters, I believe. Um, and they got within seven points. Now, we've seen the Lions actually blow quite a few people out in, in big numbers. But... They were within seven points and they're bottom of the league. So I, I quite like that. I thought that was an interesting... How how are they? Are they like the... Uh, not the doppelganger team, but are they that team that they just can't sort of get around for some reason? What What is it that makes them stay in? You know, because there's Matt Morgan and the, and the team putting in good stats and yet Patriots are still within seven. That's, that's yeah. quite impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they are. And the only thing more impress- impressive than that, Mark, is, is. Um, Matt Morgan's free throw percentage at eighty seven point one. That is. That is. But also I'm gonna go one step further. Oh, no. Gabriel Alessini is eighty eight point five free throw percentage. I think that's the top that's the highest in the league, I think. Um and Matt Morgan second. But um yeah, so um but their shooters. You know what? I'm just gonna carry on going. Give me give me another air horn, Mark. Another air horn you want? The London Lions again. They were at home and they had the Leicester Riders come and play with them. Um, <laughs> to come and play and with them. <laughs> oh. Do you want to come over and play? <laughs> anyway, this is the um, this is the second time these two ga- guys have actually. Oh God, man! It is bedtime, isn't it? Jesus. <laughs> anyway, this is the second time these two teams um, have played. Last time they played was ten days ago. And they lost by 10. Um, but you know what? You know, we've gone from one Morgan to another Morgan. Connor, Connor Morgan with 21.7 rebounds. Um, but again, Josh Sharma. He's just doing all the dirty, all the dirty work inside. 18 points, seven rebounds. Um, just another thing, because I really looked at overall stats this week, is... Do you know Josh Sharma? Not who I thought it was going to be. Not personally. But he's got the highest two-point percentage in the league. Josh Sharma. Really? Yep. Um, 
Seven players in this game, both teams with 100% free throw percentage mark. I know you'll like that one after your... Uh... Blimey. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like um, that. That's good. That's what it should be. You've got an but, uncontested you know shot. Come on. <laughs> I d it's very different when you're doing it in a oh, game I get under it. that look, pressure, though. Look, I, I, am, I, I can openly say I will throw every brick up there under the sun, and I might even throw an air ball if I'm doing free throw. I'm not a professional wow. basketball player. I'm not a shooter. That's not, but these guys are. They should be doing it. And if you're getting anything wow. under 50%, you suck and you need to put in more effort. That's it. Wow. Uh, I my, I apologize to all the BBL players on behalf of the podcast. No. There's no excuse <laughs> for that. At nothing Under 50%, if you're doing free throws, there's no excuse. That's it. Mm. Zero excuse. Well, look, this is a point we've got to talk about. And this is, you know, London just picked up another win, 38. And it looked to me like a terrible quarter for the right, uh, third quarter for the Riders. You know, there was, it was like between eight points and 12 point game. Get to the third quarter and it, they end 28 points down. Um, so, yeah, it, it wasn't the best quarter for them. But the, you got to talk about the Riders are in absolute, feels like absolute free fall at the moment and they're close to dropping in the bottom three and after such a great start to the season trying to work out what's happened um just going back they've lost the last eight out of 11 games ouch that's not good you can see that those first five games they started great last lost the last eight out of last 12 i mean i can go back through them um phoenix loss london loss they beat Manchester. Yep. Sheffield lost. Phoenix lost. London lost. They won that huge game in Newcastle. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, the big Newcastle game. That was a big one. Caledonia lost. Surrey, they beat them. Newcastle lost. Manchester lost. Um, and um, you've got to argue with, you know, players of the calibre that we're talking. You know, you're talking, you know, some of the best BBL players in recent history. You know, to be looking at the bottom three, it's like, wow, what's what's happened? Yeah, and and the lake and you know, Lakers, the Riders as well have got uh, quite a history of winning uh, in recent years. So there, I have seen you know, you know a few memes, should we say, on the social medias where people are saying along the lines of a free fall with the Riders, like you know, how uh, how far they fall from grace. It, it's just surprising. You've got a high calibre team that they've got a history of forming well. Where where does that suddenly go wrong? Yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, the, there have been some really close games. What, um, what did it end on? But a um, uh, hundred to sixty-two. Oh Jesus! Um, but you know, when you've got <laughs> thirty-eight player point calibers. But you got players like, you know, uh, Kimball McKenzie on your team. You know, um, it's... You can't be losing. I'm just surprised. 38 I'm points. I'm just surprised. Eight in the last 11. Eight in the last 11. But, um, yeah, you know what? Like, like, I know I'm doing two London games, and I do feel a bit harsh um, for not being as enthusiastic. So I do apologise to London fans. Well, I am trying How to about we do a uh, congratulations, London? <laughs> It's always nice to have winners and losers. So, you know, there we go. Well, speaking of winners and losers, I'm going to do a slightly different segue to our next game. We had an email. Yeah? And we had an email from a previous, I was almost going to say contestant, a previous guest on the show. All right. Who is it? Mr. White. Mr. Keith, Keith White. Keith, legend. Keith, you get one of these. Yeah. Writing a brief one. So thank you very much for your email, Keith. And he said... Did Keith tell you who to support? Well, he said he enjoyed the roundup and he was he was getting a few people in the Bald Eagles and around the Eagles' nest to try and listen to the show, which is always appreciated. So thank you anyone or everyone who Keith has mentioned to listen. But I think with the exception of the Portsmouth Fury... Yes. The Newcastle Bald Eagles 
are probably the only other local team we've been talking about. That is correct. So if you are a local team and you're listening and we haven't mentioned you yet, get in contact with the show and maybe we'll have an interview and we can mention you. Yeah. But, segue over, he said he felt bad because his lack of turning up to that show did cause <gasps> them to lose that game. So he said, Hang on. You know what? That means the streak is still going. No, no. He said, he wow. He said, you know what? I thought I'm going to attend that next game, the game against Bristol, and all will, he will redeem everything. Oh, no. Yeah. Th that didn't go well for Keith. <laughs> oh, so it, we're saying the Flyers. The streak was over. The Flyers won 89 71. His streak is officially over. Uh, Keith, you could not resuscitate that terrible loss there's no other way to put it 18 point um but what was good if we're gonna have a positive is that the flyers have now won a couple of road wins because that's their their second one so congratulations to the flyers <laughs> and more importantly that flips them up to fourth position now we were just talking about leicester being in free fall Bristol were doing the same. And week after week, we kept saying, hang on, they were second. Now they're third. Now they're fourth. Then they went sixth. Now they've gone back up to fourth again. Like, the, the, you couldn't, I say you can't make it up, but the, the way in which people keep moving in the table, if we take, I want to say London out of the equation, but everyone keeps moving so much in this table, you think it, it's up for anyone. Anyone can play. Anyway. Onto the game itself, it was a slow start. It was a very slow start. And I watched this one. Um, well, I don't want to say hoping Bristol would do well, but it, it was nice to see their last game and get the encouragement from maybe they found something. They've got a new player in, CJ Jackson. He seems to be leading sort of the team and bringing it together a little bit from the Flyers because they had a few injuries and they've had a few movements in, in players. So... 22-20 was the end of the first quarter. And I want to say you can't get closer than that, but after a slow start to finish on, you know, on 20 odd points, you think, okay, the game's going to pick up a bit. It kind of did until the first half, nothing really going on there. But I've got to shout at this point to Brad Green because he was inside and he was the big man there. Absolute mayhem he was causing. Just anyone. Big man, the, the great man. Yeah. Anyone who wanted to get in the paint or anywhere near that, it just wasn't having any of it. And I won't say just at both ends, but particularly offensively, he was just, I mean, he ended on, uh, was it 27 points and 14 rebounds? I mean, that's what you want a big man to do. So massive respect for him turning out on that. The game was pretty even, and it was a really, oh, you know, this is worth watching because Newcastle are a great caliber team. And so are the Bro Bristol at their sort of their cause. But they've, they've both had a few blips along the way. Fourth quarter, completely flipped on it. Absolutely flipped because it was at one point that you thought Newcastle were going to take this. And in the fourth quarter, yeah, they went 26 and 10. Bristol just outscored them completely. And that's exactly what Keith put. Except Keith went a little bit controversial and I thought you'd quite like this. It was a close game until the fourth quarter. And from that point of the game, it was decided by the referees. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what a little Keith what a little that? slap in there from Keith. He wasn't he wasn't happy with the refs calling. Um I'm, I won't say I'm not I can't say I, I agree or disagree, but there were definitely some key calls by the refs that changed the pace of the game, I think. Um I don't necessarily I don't have personally the knowledge to say whether I think the, the calls were right or not but they did change that pace of the game. And as we know, sometimes if you've got momentum and then someone's trying to break it, if you're on a 26 and 10 run, you've not only are you stopping the other team getting points, but you'll keep racking them up as well. And they keep, they can't get their momentum back. They're never going to catch you. So I think maybe that's where Keith was going with it, but still, it was a great game. So that's for me, that was my game of the week. I really, really enjoyed watching that. I think if Keith has said that, <laughs> the referees are just a disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thank you for the Keith, email, Keith. He, he knows his basketball. He does know his basketball. He knows his basketball. That that 
he has seen something. But and the, he's there. The, when you're there, you see. But the Flyers, right, they flew in, and then they flew back out with a win. So that's taken them up to fourth place. So that that's it. That's really interesting. Um, you know, they got them, Sheffield Sharks and Eagles. They're all and and Caledonia. They're all sitting around these really really close numbers together, like within a one or two wins from each other. So over to you. Who you got? Yeah, give me a buzzer. Give, give me, me a buzzer. buzzer. No, actually, I want an opinion this night. Not a buzzer. See, I'm normally there, so I can do what I want to do. Give me an applause for the Cheshire Cat. There we go. Consistency is the word I'd use for the Cheshire Phoenix. Um, they took on the Sheffield Sharks at the Shark Tank. And um, they got 104, 85 win. And you've got to be talking about, you know, Ethan Charjosh. Wow. Um, the impact he had in tonight's game. Um, sorry, not tonight's game. Uh, when was it? <laughs> when was it? It was the 10th. The 10th? Bloody hell. Um, anyway, the impact he had, um, you know, 16 points, 14 rebounds. He gets his double-double. Um, he's also got six assists as well. Um, and, you know, it's just, just looking at the stats as well for the Cheshire Phoenix. Got me here. The Quincy, how did you say his name? Is it Rideau? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Quincy Rideau, again, he is Mr. Consistent. Um, I'm going to come back to him in a second. But, you know, um, Aaron Ray, 17 points, six rebounds. Um and you know Jalen Pipkins he is you one like, of my favorite like Jaylen, players in the league. Yeah, he he um he chipped in with 16 points. You got to talk about uh, Nixon. He had uh, 20 points as well. Um, but Ethan Charjosh and the Quincy Radio. Uh, no, what did I say? Rado. Yeah. Um. Now let me just this game in particular. Um, your man in the match is Ethan. However. Quincy Rideau, 24 points he got in this game. That was the most points anyone scored in this game. He got seven rebounds. That is the second highest amount of rebounds that anyone got in this game. He got seven assists. Second most highest amount of assists that anyone else got in this game. Um, you've got to say he's also got more assists than anyone else in the league. And um, I think steals as well. I want to say he's got more steals than anyone. Um, I've got another stat that I know will bring a smile to your face when talking about him. He's also got the most fouls than any other player <laughs> in the entire league. Yes. That is my kind of player. Yeah, 100%. That is my kind of player. Um, so, yeah, um, I have got a little segue coming up to for that, but I'll come back. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, look, Cheshire seem to be on fire. They're... They're, I suppose th those guys and the gladiators are the ones who are put or keeping the pressure on the London Lions. Um, you know, the Lions only need to make one more mistake and have another dent in that crown. And then you're looking at, you know, Cheshire and Phoenix, uh, sorry, Ch the Cheshire Phoenix and the Caledonia Gladiators. You're only one game away from tying. Yeah, I mean, the thing you've got to also take in consideration is London have actually played 20 games at the moment. Whereas the other... Oh, yeah, so I think it's three or four And the others, are, yeah, they're three or four ahead. The only team that they're not three or four ahead of is actually Bristol. It's one ahead. But everyone else, they're pretty much three. Uh, three ahead on Cheshire and four ahead for Caledonia. So and I've said this many times before. Personally, I'd rather have the, the you know, you want the points in the bag. You'd rather have the games played, um, I think, at this stage. Uh, so, that, yeah, like you said, there's a little bit of conjecture. Who knows what might happen in those three games for Cheshire, four games for Gladi uh, the Caledonia. Um, however, this Friday, Mark, I know you're going to be watching it live because the London Lions are back in the cover box. Yeah. Taking on the Cheshire Phoenix. <laughs> that is a big one. That's a um, big game. That's a big game. Cheshire can take something away from the copper box then i will eat my hat and take that trophy mm. championship trophy away from the londons and say the league's back on if they win say they win three games and one of which being that london game they win three games 
that's going to put them up to 30 points and London won't get any more points, then that will bring them within four points of London. That's, that's, it's, it's wide open again. Yeah, well, I think if they win all their games in hand, which includes going up against London, yeah, I think they're only two points away. Fairly sure. I could be wrong. Uh, but they're three games behind. Yeah, yeah, what I'm saying, if they win those three games and one of those three games will be London, but obviously London going to be playing as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, um, yeah, but they're 34. L London are on 34. They're on, um, then that, that would take them up to 30, I think. Unless I've got it totally wrong. Yeah. Don't forget, London will be playing. And if London lose one of those games, I know what you're saying, yeah. But they're on 24. Kind of Cheshire, agree, on, yeah. Cheshire on 24 at the moment. You get two points for a win. So three wins is that six points. That gives you the 30. So they're still two wins away. Okay. But regardless of that, terrible man maths on, oh, on both sorry. parts. No, no, no. I know why it makes sense. Because once this game is played, London will be on 21. Yes. Correct. That's what makes yeah. That's okay. why it will be four points. Yes. So you're right, but it'll be 21 games. That makes more sense. And then you're right. So um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we're kind of both right there. That's man math. I was thinking. Perfect. I think we're agreeing with each other here. We I'm are. not sure. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, um, I do have a soft spot for the Sheffield Sharks. I love the. Are they the ones that have the grey kit? Mm -hmm. I think they do. Mm -hmm. I love the grey kit. Um, you know, Jalen Pipkins is one of one of my favourite players um, as well, but. Just moving on to another segue, Mark, because it ties in lovely. Yes. And this is my this is my last probably BBL stat of 2023. Mm -hmm. And uh because I'm going away. Obviously, if you haven't worked that out, I'm going I'm going away on holiday. I'll still be talking on the podcast, but um yeah. So most fouls so far in the league. Yep. Number one. Quincy Riddle. Perfect. 64 fouls. Jeez. Beautiful fouls. How many eje does it say ejections then? Or just no, fouls? No, I, I don't know. I, I, I was I, just wondering. How it's split. Is he just using his um, quota? You know. <laughs> number two, Jordan Johnson with 60 fouls. Blimey. That's Newcastle Eagles. And then third is Austin Lawton with 56 fouls. Um, who does he play for? Is it Cheshire? No. Oh my God. I wrote that down. I've lost it. This is not your day for reading your own writing, is it? No. Well, who's Austin Lawton play for? I don't know off the top of my head. Oh, this is embarrassing today, Mark. I'm letting myself down. I'm letting the show down tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me put it in a bit of perspective. Uh, Man, when I say. Giants. Oh, Manchester, oh, of course it is. Of course it is. Um, let me put this in perspective. So when I say 64 fouls, you say, holy sh sugar plums. Yep. 3.8 fouls per game. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was thinking. Like, uh, is that, there's a few ejections in there, or is that he's just, yeah, I don't he, know. he uses three or four a game, and he's clever about it, how he uses them. Jordan Johnson and Austin Lawton with 3.3 um, fouls per game. Yeah. Oh, uh, average, average at the moment. But um, so you're still yeah, under you, say you it like that. It's you are still under your stats then. <laughs> yeah, I, I I used to get fouled out quite a lot, but I didn't play in the BBL. If I played in the BBL, I'd have got fouled out. I'd have been the, you know, fouled out every single game. Yeah, they'd be bidding you straight off. No, you're gonna yeah. get us to team fouls. Get out. I'd be like, coach, right, let me get the whole season getting chucked out of every game every foul every game right well we've got one more game left so yeah that's a nice segue seeing as you mentioned one of the nice fouls and he actually plays for Manchester Giants who were playing against Caledonia in Caledonia and the result well, they've of only lost one they've only lost one this season Caledonia at home Caledonia they've only lost one at home yeah and that crown's not getting dented anytime soon because congratulations to Caledonia, they won that match. <laughs> now, I will say that was a much closer game than you would think it would be. It, where you see Caledonia, they're in third, they have been vying for second. And then when you see Manchester at the bottom in ninth, 
it's kind of that same thing again with the Plymouth and the Lions. You would expect there's a big enough difference in the league. They're going to get sort of slammed here. 86 80. That was it. <laughs> and I actually took quite a few notes on this game because that's how, I want to say, how developed it was. They were missing their, their sort of, well, Caledonia were missing like Farrow in their centre, which is actually, he's, he's quite a big player for those who haven't watched them play. And he's been quite key in, I guess, just sort of keeping, not just keeping the defence at, at bay, but keeping kind of that structure in the team. And it, it, as a big guy, to not have him playing for injury, they actually got Trent Buttrick in. And he stepped up to do the job. And he was absolutely superb. Uh, he ended up with like 17 points, 12 rebounds and three assists. And he just, he just did exactly what he needed to do. And if you think if you're coming in as a player, replacing someone who's injured, you, you've got to think, oh, there's, there's actually quite a lot of pressure on you. Superb, absolutely superb performance. Um, however, <laughs> Caledonia are quite well known for Patrick Whelan, leading the way, putting in the points. He couldn't get anything. Zero points in the first half. Couldn't get anything to drop. And the Gladiators were up 44-38. So it's only a six-point lead, but to have your one of your main scorers literally get nothing, zero, in the first half. Wow. Yeah, you've got to be thinking, wow. and as a player, that must be sitting in your head like, oh, I've, I've literally been on the court the whole time. My job is literally to score. I'm getting nothing. That must have really, really been eating him. Um, then the third quarter, the Giants came out. They were fighting really hard. They gained the lead and ended up it just like forward, forward and backward right in that third quarter and the gladiators just took a two-point lead at the end of the third but that third point sorry that third point that third quarter arguably was probably the it was like this there was like two games that went on the first half of the game it was all right but it was the second half of the game it just exploded so not only did the giants come out fighting and got brought it back in to a two-point game in the fourth quarter, Whelan just went off and just started stretching the lead. And then the Giants came back fighting to pick it up. And what am I going to say again? <laughs> You're going to like... <laughs> I've just realised I've written it down again and it sounds really harsh. My actual things were free throws was a big factor once again. William Lee missed one of two. But Whelan hit both of his and they were at the same crucial time which helped extend that lead and help and then what happened was there was a big three by Whelan followed by uh, Buttrick stretched the lead further to a six point and then they just kept it um, and I mean I'm not going to say free throws were the only factor here but there was a lot of people having bad shooting days you know you think the main guard for the Caledonia couldn't get a point in the first half that's it was that kind of game looked yeah. kind of frustrating from the players um but to see <laughs> to see someone do oh there was a turnover oh yeah i'm sorry i've just got my note there there was a, uh, anderson turned it over that that definitely didn't help because mm, i won't say they had the most effective offense that night with the, the giants but if they could have got back to a four-point game i don't know maybe they could have forced something else but yeah having a having a possession and a turnover that's in your six points down that's that's game you getting that but again with the free throws i i don't know what it, i don't know why i've got a bugbear about it because it's i just I, I guess i think of it as uh mick if you mix the free throw he, or, Mickey Burn. yeah he would just be down your neck because it's like that's a fundamental uh, or he'd be shouting things like uncontested shot or you know all sorts of stuff like free that. Free throws win games. That's what yeah. you say. Free throws win games. And it's and it's true, isn't it? It is an uncontested shot. It is a pressure shot. <laughs> and, that, and, you know, where you stand it is quite a difficult, but at the same time, you can't, it is an uncontested shot at the end of the day. So, if you're, mi you, if you're you know within, got... if you're within two to four or two, four points, and then you're missing free throws on your, t and you're the losing team at the moment, it's like, that, could have changed up even if it's only one point even if you've only got the and one that one 
could just change our momentum. It's just breaking that connection. It means also that you're not two points clear. You're actually in one point clear. And then if you hit that three, you're ahead. You know, I don't know. Mark, can I, can I, you know, I've got a soft spot for the Manchester Giants. Can I, yep. can I make a, a, a statement on behalf of all Manchester Giants fans? Mm -hmm. Do it. They did not lose the game. They just ran out of time. <laughs> Fact. I actually, I would have said if that had carried on a bit longer, Giants might have got back into it. And if you, or maybe if you go the other way, if the game had ended earlier, I think the Giants would have had it as well. If Whelan hadn't picked up in that fourth quarter, that, that, that was game over for them, really. I mean, William Lee, you know, I said he missed some shots. He still ended on 16 points. Jermaine Anderson on 14. Whelan on 16. And, and Trent Buttrick on, four, on 17. But other than that, the points were kind of, uh, you know, Trent was the best on the night purely because he came into a role to do something in a replacement. And I think that's, you know, you couldn't have asked anyone to do better than he did given the position he was in. Whereas Whelan, he, he didn't score anything in the first half. In the second half, he scored 16. Arguably, he'll be back. He'll be back. Oh, he will, 100%. But if he'd have added... He'll be back stronger. I don't know. Maybe if he'd have added in five or six in the first half, it would maybe taken that pressure off and then he wouldn't have got the extras. And, you know, you could argue that the pressure was... Uh, you know, you said you saw Kobe before and the first three quarters, you thought, ah, it's nothing to write home about. And then fourth quarter, he just went manic and scored like 20 points or something in, so in fairness to kobe he did when i thought well he's doing all right he's all right he's not that great he had scored 20 24 26 points by that point yeah it's just very it's like, efficient oh, oh he's all right and i looked up and i was like holy crap he's actually scored 26 points yeah. it didn't feel like he'd scored 26 points but then he like literally i think no i think he had 24 points and they doubled his total score yeah he got 24 points in the fourth quarter alone that was game time in it that's the that's the kevin garnett thing where he always talks about uh tim duncan i think and he was like i used to hate him because he couldn't wind him up and he couldn't talk anything bad to him and uh he'd be like what's tim duncan been doing all game and looked up and be like why is he on 25 points like he hasn't done anything it's like yeah he's just efficient and he's slow and he just gets it done but yeah that was i thought it was a good week for the games to watch and if anyone um, doesn't watch them and doesn't watch them live. You know, I don't watch them live. But you suck. Well, nah, you know, it's just a bad time for me to watch them. To be honest, you know, I've, I'm a dad. Got to do the dad duties. But I do watch it on YouTube, and I will say that I think the coverage has actually improved a little bit from the beginning of the season. So I don't know if they've made some changes in the back or what they've been doing or lighting or something. But the coverage of some of the games has definitely improved as the the weeks are going on. Um, and all, and all the highlights that they do are really, really good. But again... I'm just not a fan of the adverts on YouTube. That's why I don't like... No. Like you're watching no, a play. Someone's no. just about to drive in and dunk it. It's like, hey, let's talk about Manscaped. Let's watch you. And you say, what? I just missed some huge dunk. Yeah, you, that that is not really excusable. If you've got it on Sky and you've got a place like that, I guess they can't do anything with paid or a different networks i'm sure there's licensing things and all sorts so it, if this is the way nice to get had a sky basketball <sighs> well they do or sky arena sky sports arena i know you have that but um it, yeah uh, most of the sky sports coverage is on youtube it's a uh, it'd be nice to have it on a like you know like the nba where you can have yeah um season pass and stuff like that i, um, I don't think put, put maybe on sky I'm... sports Maybe I'm naive, but I can't think it would be too difficult to serve up the media yourself and just have your own app, and that way you can see how many people actually tune in. Um, I, I understand yeah. using YouTube's great because you can get other people who aren't watching to maybe stumble upon it. But if you actually look at the figures of how many people view on YouTube, um, the numbers are pretty low, which is a real, which is I think surprising. I think there's way more people who would enjoy watching it. But they just don't know where to look or don't they're not finding it so um i don't necessarily think it's the con content i don't think it's the quality but there's there's a disconnect between people who like basketball and people who would appreciate watching bbl 
there's a disconnect between there somehow and they need to find how to, to reach that. It'd be interesting what the marketing budget is. Yeah, it, it's, um, yeah. And again, when so, if, like when someone says, yeah, yeah, we're a big sponsor, oh, we're just going to put this on YouTube, you think, oh, okay, you know, put it on one of the channels, have it on Sky Sports Arena or Sky Sports. Yeah. You know, these, like, look, this game coming up on Friday, you got London Lions at home to Cheshire Phoenix. If Cheshire win, this is a game changer. It's, it's in changing the, the top league. of the BBL. Yeah, it's going to change that, the league. You know, you could argue, you know, if this was football, it would be Sky Sports 1 prime time. Yeah. Um, or Sky Sports Premier, whatever it all is now, I don't know. But um, but yeah, uh, so... Um, yeah, there is a, yeah, there's a strange what, disconnect in the UK. And we can't we'll quite work out what, what that is. We've looked around and some stuff and I'm still digging on it, but there's definitely a disconnect between why sport isn't being hold up more, even though there's all these people playing it. There's all these professional teams, semi-professional teams, Sunday league teams, youth teams, um, FIMBA teams, uh, so popular in the country, yet for some reason, the exposure and the money doesn't sit there. I, I can't work out why. Yeah, There'll be a reason. There'll be a reason. If you know... Well, moving on, Mark. Contact us on the show. UK Basketball yeah. Podcast. Let us know. At gmail.com. That's right. right. Moving on, Mark. Can I, I want to, can I do a, I know as we round up, can I do a sh personal shout out? Oh, blimey. Yes. I'd like to do a personal shout out to the legend, the only, the only number one mascot in the world, <laughs> which is the Orlando Magic stuff. Stuff the Magic Dragon. He commented. Was it a comment or a like or something on the, on the Instagram? Yeah, I, genuinely, I can't remember now. I'll have to go and look at it. There is a connection. You need to email him, message him, Stuff right the back magic and say, dragon. "Get on the show." I think get someone was saying show. something about the NBA. Send us a signed picture. I just said, "Stuff's the goat," and he's like, "Yeah, I love that." Sent us a personal thing with a thumbs up. Stuff, and like, love it. Is the goat? He is the goat of, of all of the of all the mascots. It's not just the way he looks. Easily. It's the attitude. It's everything. Absolutely. You know brilliant. what? I don't know the, the guy's name, but like, just this is just my personal opinion on it, but stuff is the best mascot you can have. Up there as well, probably second or third, um, is a baseball mascot, which is the Phillies mascot. Isn't that who he's based on? It is who he based on because he was the two mascots were created by the same person. So I don't know what that guy's name is, but whoever that is, oh. um, you know, he's created two of the best mascots in in history. But um, well, obviously, actually, the Orlando Magic I stuff can, is number one. I can give you a tenuous uh, link here, and I'll, I'll see if I can show you this picture. You might be able to see it on the camera. But um, oh yeah, that's the the guy at the at the Buzzer UK who do jerseys, etc. Uh, but he went and actually watched, he was over in the Magic and actually watched the game over there. And I actually said to him, did you check out the, the mascot? And he's like, that is entertainment. Right, but he's actually, his words were, it was so entertaining from start to finish and the mascot's hilarious, doing impressive things. And it was great memories. And you look at that and you go, that is what a game is about. It's not, we're just going to watch a sports team. It's, there's so much more in it. I know we've said it with, when we were talking about the Portsmouth Force and, We've said it in other podcasts before, but there's something about... And the the BBL games have that. There's that energy, isn't there? And you see the games and you see all, everyone's getting excited and crowds are really shouting and everything. So, I don't know. I just It'd be lovely to see more people getting involved in it and there'd be a bit more coverage. Well, the, goat, the GOAT debate. People need to bring Orlando Magic stuff in that debate. No, he's not. He is the GOAT. That's it. The end. <laughs> he is the GOAT. Right. <laughs> Right. Well, great show. That was a great show. Now, our show will be ever so slightly different strange. for a week or two. It'll be strange because Paul be strange for two and a half weeks. He's going to get on and go on holiday. He's going to be strange for two and a half weeks. He's going to going on holiday. We've got a few episodes in the bag, so they'll be coming out as well. But for the BBO updates, you might find our audio will be a little bit different, but it will return to normal in the new year. And we'll have. I will, be f we, I will phone in from the other side gonna, of the world. He's going to phone in from the other side of the world in his flip flops, 
with his handbag, his sun cream under his towel, like a true Englishman burning in the sun. <laughs> hey, I'll see if I can do some, like, I don't know, some, I'll do, I'll try and do some, like, maybe live commentary or something of the, uh, the Adelaide 36ers game. I've, I'm going to go and see one or maybe two over there. I don't know. We'll see. But I've got, I've got one. So, uh, yeah, that'll be a, that'll be an experience. And based from what I've seen, I think the Australian, um, level of the sport is in between the BBL and America. That's kind of how it comes across. Okay. So when I say BBL, I'm really saying London. So it will be bigger than London, but less than the NBA. That's what I'm, uh, from what I've seen from photos and stuff. But we'll see. But, uh, we, you know, I will share. And so uh, we'll league. get an, uh, basically, yeah, we'll get a, a, like an Australian update. So, yeah. An Australian update. And you will be obviously taking uh, a sticker over and placing it in a suitably amazing position to take a photo. <laughs> oh, I've only got two stickers and I wanted to put one on my phone, but yes, I can well, do that. Put, put it on your phone. Well, just don't stick it. Just take one and just hold it and then you can put it somewhere and then you can move All that. Right, I'll see if I can you get it your phone. in the Adelaide 36ers arena and then we can tag it when I'm back in the UK. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Well, have a great holiday, mate. And we will all see you next time as... Uh, our next update for the BBL will be in the following week. And we've got some interesting games coming up, as Paul's mentioned. So go check them out. They'll be starting on Thursday. And we will see you next week. So until then, I hope you all have a fantastic time. Thank you very much for joining us. If you haven't listened to all our shows previously, go back and have a listen to them. We have got 47 shows out now. Uh, this is getting ridiculous. We've got like 30,000 people listening. I don't know why but thank you so much if you want to contact us contact the show on our emails ukbasketballpodcast at gmail.com or go to our instagram and check us out there i've been mark i have been paul and you said thirty thousand people yeah. listening i reckon you could divide that by ten thousand, and that will be the total amount of people who play badminton in the uk <laughs> back, back.